Today I'd like to experiment with NVIDIA's free GoGone image generator to create reference images for landscapes and other types of painting. An alternate version of this is available as a standalone app you can install on your computer called NVIDIA Canvas. It has more precise tools for drawing, but it is also missing some features found in GoGone too. Both apps produce similar results. If you're not using an RTX GPU, you cannot install NVIDIA Canvas, in which case you can use the online version of GoGone. I will demonstrate with both. Essentially, this software allows you to input information and it will output an image generated by machine learning. The GAN, as it's known, has been trained on millions of images, mostly landscape elements and some architecture. This input can be painted as regions of color which correspond to materials like sand, sky, and foliage. Or you can sketch simple lines to indicate contours and edges. You can even enter a text prompt or upload an image as your input. You can combine these inputs in various ways, apply styles to the results, and randomize them. What you get is a limitless supply of reference images to use for your digital or traditional art. The days of searching for images online are coming to an end. The images generated by Gauguin are not copyright protected, so you can use them for your art legally, unlike the images you may find in a search. Best of all, you can easily modify the reference to suit your needs. Want to reshape a mountain? You can do that. Want to turn daytime into a sunset? That's a click away. This is revolutionary for artists. Let's start by exploring the online version of Gogon 2 since it has the most features and does not require an RTX GPU. First, you may need to resize your browser zoom level so everything fits on screen. You must agree to the terms of use before you will be able to use this app. I would read this because you are agreeing to let NVIDIA collect and use the images you generate. Next, press the randomize button that looks like dice. If no image appears in the right window, then you may want to disable your VPN or anything that might be blocking the app from sending and receiving data from the cloud. Once you're able to generate an image, we can explore how the controls work. The cyan box on the left is your input canvas. You can draw and paint here to define shapes and then send it to the cloud to be turned into an image. Above the canvas are some tools. Let's select the brush tool. This allows you to paint solid colors to create a segmentation map. Segments are the visually distinct regions of an image. For example, the sky is segmented from the ground. The sky is blue and the ground is a different color, so there is a visual separation. Color will simply be a placeholder that will be filled with an image. You can select the type of image resource from the menu on the left. There are categories with different image assets, such as water, clouds, plants, and architecture. For now, I just want to select a landscape rock. I'll paint a little blob on the canvas, and then to output an image, I will click on the right arrow. As you can see, a sky is generated with a rocky blob hovering over it. If I add more to the blob and output the image again, you can see the form and the shape of the stone changes. There isn't just one image of a rock texture here. There are thousands of images that the GAN was trained on, but within each of those images, there may have been thousands of individual rocks. You'll notice that the resolution of the image is decent too. Not super crisp, but detailed enough for you to make a painting from. I'll select plant bush and paint another blob. After outputting it, I now have two objects floating in the sky. You'll notice that each time I output the image, the result is slightly different. You will never get the same image twice working with this tool. In fact, you can click the randomize button to change the results. Let's do that. As you can see, all three image types are changing. Once I added the bush element, it started to affect the appearance of the stone, making it take on some features that resemble the pattern in the bush. You may find that some input affects what is already on your canvas. This can make this tool frustrating to work with because you might have something you like and then you mess it up. At any point, if there is something you like, right click on it and save the image. You can only save as a PNG, but that's a fine format. I will also say that most of the images you generate are going to look a little off. There might be areas that just don't belong, or scenes that look so alien you can't even tell what they are. When I use generated images for a painting, I take what I like and leave the rest. Making an exact copy would look odd unless you're going for an abstract or surreal look. There might even be details that are missing, like a reflection, shadow, or waterline. 
You'll of course need to remember to add those in when you create the painting. It's important to remember that the GAN is not generating photography, it's barfing it up. Occasionally, an image does come out looking whole, and that's what we want. Think of this more as an inspiration generator. You can easily see different images with different lighting and color and use that to assist you, but it's not something to follow literally. Just because it looks real doesn't mean it is real, and there's more to realism than color, form, and texture. There's also physics like gravity, and even weather and other integrations and interactions between objects that are near each other. There is also the context or the story the scene is supposed to tell. All of that is missing in a generated image. I'll select plant wood, and I'll use a thinner brush to draw a vertical trunk coming down from the bushy object. I'll output the image, and now you can see that it interprets the shapes as a tree and adapts to fill it with the appropriate imagery. Unfortunately, these drawing tools are very imprecise, yet the edges you draw define the outline of an object. So if you're sloppy when you paint, your results will be sloppy too. You can get a little more precision using a tablet instead of a mouse, but occasionally the pen input does not work, and I have to use my finger with touch input instead. If you approach this with the intent of being very intentional and precise, you're going to feel like this app does not work. You actually need to experiment and make small changes, letting the app do most of the work until you get something that looks good. Let's try a different approach to getting a similar image. Rather than painting to create input, I'll use a text prompt. By clicking on the first toolbar button, you can clear your canvas and start over. Next to that is an undo button should you need it. You only get one undo though. Under input utilization, I'll need to uncheck everything except for text. This menu defines which types of input will influence the output. At first, I was only using the segmentation map, but now I will use only text. I'll enter palm tree in the desert, and then output the image. As you can see, I get a random assortment of palm trees in a desert landscape. I can randomize the results to drastically change the image. You might go from a desert to a beach. This randomize button really comes in handy for creating scenes that are unique. If I'm happy with the composition, I can apply different styles from the top right image thumbnails. This may change the image so much that it no longer looks the same, so be careful. These styles change the materials, lighting, time of day, weather, and more. As you can see, I am unable to return to the image I liked, so I will have to start over. The goal here is to land on an image you're mostly happy with, and then tweak it a bit until it is tidy enough to use as a reference. Here's an image that I think will work as my foundation. I can use the left arrow to copy the output image to the input canvas. This will allow me to modify it and use it as an input. If there is an object or area I don't want to keep, I can use the real image eraser to remove it. I'll erase in the input area over the mistakes or unwanted objects. Now after outputting, those areas are no longer visible. Another way to work is to automatically generate segmentation and sketches from an image. I'll enable only text input, and give it the prompt Misty Jungle Waterfall. I'll feed that back into the input canvas, and then click on the Compute Sketch from Real Image button. This analyzes the image loaded onto the canvas, and draws lines where there are separations in the planes. I'll output again with the sketch as the only input, and you can see that it generates a completely different image based on those contours. You may be able to see that better if I hide the image under input visualization. You'll need to select another tool before doing that. The features in the image follow the direction of the lines, but it's not always easy to control. If I select the sketch eraser and erase some of the lines, when I update the output, you can see how the image has replaced the features in those areas with something flatter. I can clear the canvas and simply sketch to create an image. I'll make something that looks like architecture and output it. The result looks like a weird building. As you can see, it really matters if I am precise. I'll erase and change the sketch, and you can see how the output has been updated. As you can see with this sketch of a skull, the output may slightly resemble your sketch, but it won't always be interpreted with the correct materials, lighting, or forms. 
The randomize button and styles can change up the materials and help to better fit the sketch lines into the right context. When you randomize, you may continue on the same tangent of whatever material or context is selected, but it may also radically change the scene. For example, you might go from painting stone to plants. The strokes you make may also cause the materials to alternate between image assets. You can also edit images using sketches. If I generate a beach from a text prompt, make that my input, erase the areas I want to replace, and enable both the sketch and the image, now I can use the pencil to draw in rocks, sand ripples, and driftwood more precisely. This time I will copy the output to the input canvas, and then compute segmentation from real image. This will analyze the image and create regions for each type of imagery in the scene. For example, the sky is represented with cyan, and the grass and trees are shades of green. Under input visualization, you can hide the image so you're only seeing the segmentation regions. I'll enable segmentation only for the input and update the output image. Now you can use the paint bucket to change the regions to another type of imagery. I'll make the sky all clouds and change some of the trees to stone. After that, I'll change the land to sea. You can see how easily I can change the scene. Sure, this is not precise enough yet for me to really draw exactly what I want and get predictable results, but that's a good thing. I want to get away from whatever bias and stale memories are in my head and view unique images that have never existed. I can simply stumble upon what I want, or I can try to sculpt an image. It's really fun. Another neat trick is to create a feedback loop where the output goes to the input, and that repeats a number of times. This has the effect of making the image more detailed or sharper, but it can also quickly destroy the image quality if overused. Next, let's explore the NVIDIA Canvas desktop application and how it differs from Gogon 2. Canvas is based on the same research as Gogon, but they are not identical applications. Canvas does not require an internet connection because the image is generated on your device using your RTX GPU, whereas Gogon has you exchange information with the cloud. You also don't have to click a button to agree to the terms of use. I don't see anything indicating that the Canvas app has the same terms of use the online version does in regards to NVIDIA being able to collect and use the images you generate. The first thing that you will notice is that Canvas has a much better user interface. It looks like a finished application, not just a technology preview. One thing that makes Canvas faster to work in is the auto update feature for the output. It updates as soon as you stop painting. What's even cooler is that you can paint on the output side. This can be more efficient because you can often get images to appear with very little paint on the segmentation map. I would say that this is really the way you should be creating landscapes with the brush. It gives you more predictable results because you can gradually build up regions rather than just block them in like you would a painting. You can make the segmentation or just the output visible if you want to focus on one or the other, and you can zoom in and out. Auto update can be slow on some systems though, so it can be disabled in the preferences. The eraser works great in Canvas. It's a lot like the real image eraser in Gogon. When you are painting in the output window, the eraser sort of erodes the landscape. For example, if I had painted clouds on a sky, erasing the clouds would replace them with the sky. And if I painted water with land surrounding it and boulders on top of that, the boulders would erode first, revealing the ground, then the water. So the eraser removes materials and leaves behind a logical background and separation. If you look at the segmentation map, it does not match what you would expect to see. It's very sloppy. So it's important to remember that you aren't trying to make a painting here, you are directing the GAN to make an image. Overall, the image you are working on is more stable in the Canvas app and is less likely to drastically change. In Gogon, you can easily lose your progress with the wrong input. If you do make mistakes, Canvas offers multiple undos and redos. In Gogon, you only get one undo. There is even a warning when you reset the Canvas. Canvas also works with a drawing tablet and pen, but even touch and mouse perform much better. Pressure sensitivity is not supported, but it doesn't need to be. You aren't painting, you are providing visual input. One of the most important differences is that Canvas offers a straight line mode. This is absolutely essential for generating precise images, and I don't get why it has been left out of Gogon 2. 
you can use this to create straight horizons. Another key difference is that Canvas allows you to work in layers. This makes it easier to compose the segmentation by overlapping layers, and it reduces the risk of ruining segments you're happy with. When you are ready to export, you can save as a layered PSD or PNG. And you can even save your progress in the native CAN format. You'd have to leave Gogon 2 open and hope for the best if you wanted to take a break. Another nice feature is the recent materials list, which shows the last used materials you selected. Though both Canvas and Gogon have a dropper tool that can sample materials from the segmentation map. And if you really want to speed up your workflow, you can use the keyboard shortcuts in Canvas. Canvas is amazing, but there are some missing features that are found in Gogon 2 that may convince you to use both apps. Most importantly, Canvas does not offer a randomization button. This is essential if you want to keep the same elements in a scene, but rearrange them. Though I do get that Canvas is supposed to be more stable. On that same note, you cannot use Canvas to generate segmentation and sketches from a real image, nor can you feed the output back to the input. The sketch tool is not even available in Canvas, so you cannot sketch to draw shapes. Canvas also cannot import images to use as a starting point. There also appear to be slightly fewer materials to choose from. Most notably, aside from a stone wall, there isn't any architecture. I also noticed that Gogon will produce a lot of non-landscape images. There are elements of animals and man-made materials that can appear. Nevertheless, Canvas is still in beta, and these missing features may come to Canvas in the future. To wrap up this video, let's see what happens if I use a third-party art application to create segmentation maps and sketches. Since importing is not supported in Canvas, I'll be bringing these into Gogon too. The canvas is square, so the images I create will need to be as well. First, I'll use a vector application like Adobe Illustrator to create a sketch with some polygonal shapes in it. We'll see how well this works for generating a scene with architecture. If I create these shapes on layers, I can easily fill them with color to create segmentation. I'll make three versions, sketch, segmentation, and both. First, the sketch. Rather than upload it as a sketch, I will need to upload it as an image. Then analyze it to let Gogon create the contours. Next, I'll send the sketch input to the output. As you can see, it does sort of recognize the shapes I drew. Had I gone for a more photorealistic style, I may have achieved a better result, but that would require a lot of work and sort of defeats the purpose of using this tool. If I randomize the results and change the styles, you can see how the GAN adapts the imagery. Let's try the segmentation map on its own. Again, I need to import it as an image and analyze it first. The generated segmentation map is very sloppy. You would have to spend a lot of time cleaning this up to get a good result. Let's just see what happens. This time the GAN does not recognize anything and just creates some abstract shapes. How about if we include the sketch and segmentation map together? I will first analyze the image as a sketch, and output based on that. Then I will send the output back to the input, and generate the segmentation map from that. Now I will send both the sketch and segmentation map to the output. I get a pretty interesting result, and with some randomization, some architecture is even recognized. Let's try a real landscape photo set to threshold. If I analyze it to have Gogon draw the contours, I get something that at least resembles an image, but it's the wrong context and shows grass rather than trees. This just goes to show that you are not trying to create a painting or feed a painting to the GAN. That's not what it wants. It wants boundaries, edges, and contours. And it wants them expressed in a specific way that can feel very counterintuitive to humans. It definitely worked better just to doodle on the canvas and preview my progress a little at a time. And that's because you need to gradually build up the context of the image. If I start sketching a face a few strokes at a time, I can sculpt a face. And if I randomize it, I'll get roughly the same shape and contours with different lighting, form, and materials. I don't recommend trying to elaborately sketch a landscape with the hope that it will be able to be recreated with photographs. Gogon just doesn't do that. There are other machine learning apps like Adobe Photoshop's Neural Filters that can change simple artwork into a photo, but they have similar quirks to Gogon. Photoshop is definitely worth checking out. That's all I have for you today. As technology for image generation evolves, I will continue to explore it, so be sure to subscribe if you want to follow along. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.